Good afternoon, everyone. It is Sunday, December 19th. This is video blog post number five, question mark. Uh, we're getting close to our holiday break from basketball officiating, but uh, that doesn't mean that the video blog posts stop. So unfortunately for those of you who aren't big fans of the video blog posts, you're going to continue to see my face even through the holidays. Uh, I want to thank Craig Bauer for giving me the idea for this week's video blog post, which we're going to base on free throw positioning. I think this is a great time of year to discuss this specifically because a lot of times during spring, summer, fall, we fall into bad habits. And once we're back out on the court, those bad habits can manifest uh, in a bunch of different ways. So um, a great idea from Craig specifically on you know, what he's seen in, in his games, what, what I've seen on film, we just want to make sure that all officials are positioning themselves adequately during free throws so that we can find penalties and violations if they are there. Okay, so you will have to forgive me. Uh, I apologize for the crudeness of my drawings in this video. This is actually the fourth time that I have tried to record this video because I was trying to do live drawing and apparently my workstation, uh, my laptop, wasn't uh, a big fan of me recording a video and using the drawing tool in PowerPoint. So I went ahead and put all of the drawings in a PowerPoint and going to try to circumvent Windows 11 uh, in that way or at least until Scott Helmka uh, agrees to go into his own pocket to purchase a higher powered laptop for me, which is probably never going to happen. So we'll just have to deal with my crude drawings for the time being. But uh, th th this, this diagram here is the diagram we're going to use for all of the subsequent instructions. So uh, this gives you a good idea of the proper positioning for lead center, excuse me, and trail officials uh, in three person. Now, what I'll do with the first slide here is we'll talk about where we want officials to be located in two person. Okay, so um, if you can forget for a moment about this third official up here by the score and timers table, if this were two person officiating crew, the lead is never going to change. The lead is always going to be located on table side on the out of bound side of the end line. Okay, this here, this is why I have this T here, this center would actually be the trail official in two person. Now in two person, the trail official is not only going to have responsibility on the ball, the trail official is also going to have responsibility on players across the lane from them. They're going to have responsibility on any players that are in the front court beyond the three point arc but they're also going to need to have some really good peripherals because if there's players in the backcourt, they're going to need to see those players as well. So there's a lot of responsibility from the trail officials perspective, which is why in two person, it is very important and vital that the lead official help out wherever that lead official can. Specifically, uh, when you're talking about the lane line nearest to the lead official, if they see a violation over here and the trail isn't blowing the whistle on that violation, the lead official should help out in two person if they see a violation on the lane line closest to them. Obviously the far lane line is also their responsibility, but the lead has to be aware of the fact that the trail official has uh, mm -hmm. basically responsibility across the court from anything outside of the three point arc all the way to the opposite end line. So if the, if the lead official can help out, that's what we want them to do. For the trail official, again, it's important to be positioned where the C is on this particular diagram, but have your body positioning be such that if there's players in the backcourt, you want to keep an eye on them while making sure that the free thrower doesn't violate. You don't wanna miss elbows or jawing or whatever's going on in the backcourt uh, between opponents. Okay, so something to keep in mind for two-person officiating. So from this diagram here, this would be uh, applicable to either 
two person or three person. And it's the fact that I wanted to call to everyone's attention that over the years, there has been uh, a, a movement towards the lead official standing in this lower lane spot during the first shot of a two shot free throw. Please, with sugar on top, take the extra five steps, even on the first shot of a two shot free throw, take the extra five steps and officiate from the out of bound side of the end line on table side. Okay. Because here's what happens if the lead official posts up here in this lower lane slot, two things are going to happen. Number one, they're going to start having a conversation with this player, the player closest to them, number one. And number two, they're going to watch the ball in flight to see if it goes in or not. That doesn't help us officiate what the lead official should be officiating in this regard, which is the players on the far lane line to make sure, again, I know on a, on a first shot of a two shot free throw, everybody thinks, well, you know, the players are relaxed, nothing's going on. We can't take that for granted. We have to make sure that we have eyes at all times where our eyes should be. So from that perspective, cut out the distractions for yourself by not being in this bottom slot on the first free throw of a two shot free throw. Always operate whatever the shot is in the sequence, always operate from the out of bounds side of the end line, maybe two, three steps back from the lane line nearest to you, okay, as the lead official. So this next diagram here, this in, in, and the rest of the diagramming is going to uh, assume that we're working in three person. However, uh, for this diagram in particular, one thing that I that I wanted to point out, the C should never be located near the uh, midline, nor should they be standing at the 28 foot line. That does not allow them to see their primary area on a free throw, which is the free thrower, him or herself. I cannot tell if a free thrower's toe or half of a foot is on the free throw line while they're shooting, if I am officiating from the 28 foot line or even worse, closer to the midline. The center official should be in a position where they can clearly see whether a free thrower is violating or not. And quite frankly, I always on free throws as a center official, I am, about a half a step back from free throw line extended. That's where I'm positioned as a center official in three person and as a trail official in two person, because my primary responsibility is making sure that free thrower doesn't violate. Then when the shot goes up, as the center in three or the trail in two, I am watching to make sure that the player doesn't cross the free throw line before the ball hits the rim, number one. And number two, once the um, shot is released, or I should say, I'm sorry, before the shot is released, I'm not only watching the free thrower, but I'm watching the players on the opposite lane line to make sure there's no violation from, from their perspective as well. So the center official has a lot of responsibility when it comes to free throw positioning. And what we want to make sure is that they are positioned to adequately see if there are violations that occur. We've talked in past blog posts, we've talked in training meetings, you are going to get beat. You will get beat probably multiple times in a game. As the center official, getting beat should be the last thing on your mind. It, it, it should not even be a concern. Your concern should be threefold. Number one, did the free thrower violate? Number two, did the players on the opposite lane line that I am responsible for violate? Number three, now that the ball is in the air and there's a rebound, I am working deep enough that I can help the lead official see if there's a foul on those rebounds. That's why the center official needs to basically work a half step back from free throw line extended and then 
either stay there or what I do is I typically take a step towards the end line once the ball is released because I want to be as deep as possible as that center official to help on rebounding action. So please do not operate from the 28 foot line, the 37 foot line, the 45 foot line, always operate from, again, a half step within the free throw line extended, right? And as you can see here, I included in this diagram, the three areas, the three, I guess you could say primary coverage areas are things that the center official needs to be looking for on a free throw. Now, one thing I want to talk about, and this is in three person specifically, if there is a two shot free throw, and only if there is a two shot free throw, the trail official should be located just inside the front court of the midline, okay, approximately where I have the T in this particular diagram. And that's so that they can see the whole court, number one. And number two, they can see the uh, substitute process. Are there subs coming into the game? That's why the trail official uh, should be just on the front court side of the midline, only in three person, and only on the first of a two shot free throw. Then once it's time for the second shot, that trail official moves down to I, you know, as the trail official, I'm 28 foot line extended is probably going to be as close to the midline as I get. I might be a step inside the 28 foot line towards the end line uh, just to help out on rebounds, violations, whatever the case may be. The other thing to remember as well, in three person, the trail official has the responsibility if the ball did not hit the rim. OK, if the ball does not contact the rim. That is a violation. So free thrower shoots, the ball is either an air ball or it bounces off the glass entirely, but it doesn't hit the rim. That's a violation. And the trail official is responsible for that. Now, every once in a great while, and I'm going to say under 5% of the time, the center might see that missed rim violation if the ball is on their side of the hoop. Most of the time, 95% of the time, the trail official is going to be able to pick that up. But the, the one time in 50 that the trail official can't see that, the center official, if they have 100% knowledge, if they are confident 100%, Make sure you give the trail official the opportunity to call that first. And if you know with 100% knowledge that they, it, they just so happen to miss it, delay your whistle, give them a chance. If the, if the whistle from the trail doesn't blow, then you can make that violation call. But the trail official is always responsible for a missed rim violation on a free throw. As the trail official in three person, and this kind of goes back to the, to the philosophy of the, the two person positioning, right? The trail official in three person is basically has eyes on two things. Number one, anything that happens outside of the three point arc. So as the trail official, if you've got players in the backcourt, specifically if you've got players from each team in the backcourt, you need to open yourself up. You need to open your shoulders up to the court to be able to see what's going on in the front court and in the back court in case there's any intentional fouls, technical fouls, whatever the case may be. But you need to have eyes on the rest of the court because you know the center's eyes are on the free thrower and the far lane line. The lead official has eyes on their far lane line. So as the trail official, you need to have a lot of awareness. So a lot of times that's standing with your shoulders parallel to the sideline in order to be able to see the court effectively. The other thing to keep in mind too, 
on the last slide, we talked about the trail official standing just inside the midline on the first shot of a two shot free throw. Here's what's important to keep in mind there. If there are players in the backcourt, you want to make sure that your shoulders are not closed to the backcourt. In that regard, you would stand basically at the midline with your shoulders open so that you can see the entire court. In a highly, in, in a highly volatile, intense game, as the trail official, if there are opponents in the backcourt and it's clear that they're there, there's a good possibility that they're drawing with one another or that tempers are flaring. As the trail official, I'm going to see that, make eye contact with the center official so that that center official knows, hey, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a position probably at the midline for this last free throw so that I can make sure there's no fouls, there's no uh, penalty, or, I'm sorry, there's no fouls, there's no technicals, there's, there's nothing but I'm going to take steps closer to what's happening in the backcourt so that I can make sure that there's no funny business going on. But again, as the trail official, you want to try to make eye contact with that center official to make them aware, mm -hmm. hey, I'm stepping closer and taking a position on the midline because mm -hmm. there's players in the backcourt. And I need to make sure in this highly volatile situation that things aren't getting worse just because we don't have eyes on the situation, okay? So that way the center official knows, hey, maybe my peripherals need to open up a little bit more to catch something that the trail might usually catch, but can't because they have to have their eyes in the backcourt, okay? And their body closer to the backcourt as well. So that's all I got for you um, this week. Hopefully this was helpful. I got, I have one additional um, recommendation for a blog post. So I'll do that next week. But again, hopefully these are valuable. We've got the holiday season coming up. So happy holidays to everyone. Good luck uh, the rest of this week. I know we've got games Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at least of this week. I'm not sure we have any Thursday, but regardless, whatever games you have this week, good luck. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm always available. So thank you everyone for um, a great first month of the season. And we wish you the best over the next couple of weeks of the holidays. And you will see me next Sunday. Thank you. <laughs>